Hello everyone. So uh, we have seen what is the difference between science and engineering. We have seen what is the comparison between eyes and camera. We have covered um, like uh, flight aircrafts and uh, the comparison uh, with birds. Then we have also seen uh, the cells. What is the cell? What is the cell theory? Then we have covered uh, the classifications of cells. Uh, First type we have seen like unicellular and multicellular. We have also seen uh, what is the prokaryote and eukaryote. Okay, so now uh, we are uh, in one of the important topic that is uh, three kingdoms of life. Okay, or commonly we call it as uh, three uh, divisions. Okay, so the div uh, divisions of life. Okay, or uh, to put it more precisely, uh, currently we call it as three domains of life. Okay. So that's the today topic. So uh, we'll enter into the topic directly. Okay. So uh, in school days, uh, most of you would have studied on uh, five kingdom classification. Okay, uh, by Carlos Linnaeus. So which came in 1960s. Okay. So which was the predominant uh, classification of all the uh, living organisms. Okay. So Carlos Linnaeus uh, in 1950 he classified all the species into five kingdoms. Okay. He put all these under five kingdoms. Okay. So, so these five kingdoms are uh, arranged from like Monera, Protista, then we had uh, one kingdom for like uh, fungi, then they subdivided like animal as a separate kingdom, plant as a separate kingdom, okay. So likewise, there were like uh, much more uh, classifications in earlier times, like three kingdom classification, two kingdom classifications and lots, uh, lot more, okay. So, uh, but Currently, what we are following is that these three domains of life. Okay, so just we stick to this particular thing. Okay, so how these thing, uh, three domain or three kingdom of uh, life that we are uh, following in the modern era. Okay, so this was uh, developed by a person called Carl Lewis. Okay, so in the year 1919, okay, uh, 1990, so he uh, created this concept of three domains of life. Okay. So, uh, before this uh, period, there was like only two domains, okay, one is like bacteria, the another one was like eukaryotes, okay, so all the prokaryotes were like in one group, all the eukaryotes were in one group, okay, so that's the two uh, division they had, okay, but uh, uh, due to like uh, more research went on, okay, and more studies came up, reports came up, so based on those things, they classified uh, the prokarya into two subdivisions okay one is like bacteria and another one was archaea okay so what is this archaea okay so that's what we want to emphasize more on this particular video okay because already we know what is a bacteria uh, we have studied already we have also know what is the eukaryotes like animals fungi plants okay so flagella so moles so, so most of these things comes under eukaryotes and under bacteria you have uh, gram positive, gram negative bacteria, then uh, spirochetes, uh, lots of these comes under normal bacteria classification. Then what is this new archaea? Okay, then how it is different from these two? Why it needs a separate uh, domain? Okay, so that's the important point. Okay, so about this. Okay, so this archaea domain is actually contains a single celled organism. Okay, so just try to uh, compare with all these points uh, between these bacteria and eukaryotes okay so this archaea is similar to your bacteria which is a single celled organism so it's a unicellular also a prokaryote okay but this archaea has genes okay so based on the genetic study okay especially on the rrna okay so we will see what is an rrna in future but for now just remember rrna is called as ribosomal rna okay so we know, we have studied already what is a DNA. Okay, so similar to that, there is a next form like uh, another form of DNA which we call it as rRNA. Okay, sorry RNA. In that we have a ribosomal RNA, one type of RNA. Okay, so based on the studies conducted on this rRNA and the genes of the different species, they they uh, found out that this archaea have genes that are similar to both bacteria as well as eukaryotes. Okay, so this was like a astonishing fact for the people who discovered it. Okay, so it is similar to bacteria, it is similar to eukaryotes, even though being a single cell organism. Okay, so they have got something is uh, different uh, in this particular type of species. Okay, 
So, because they are like very similar to bacteria in appearance because it is a unicellular and prokaryote type. So, they were originally mistaken for bacteria. Okay. So, many six this is like a bacteria. Okay. So, uh, we will try to see what are the basic things. Okay. So, like bacteria, archaea are prokaryotic organism and do not have a membrane bound nucleus. So, already we have seen like it would not have a proper well defined nucleus. So, it has just a nucleoid region. Okay. So, they, uh, they also lack internal cell organs. Okay, like membrane bound organelles like mitochondria, Golgi apparatus, all those. Okay, so uh, they lack these membrane bound organelles and uh, almost it is like same size and similar shape towards the bacteria. Okay, so almost it had lots of similarities with uh, bacteria. Okay, and also the mode of division that is reproduction by binary fission. It also had one circular uh, chromosome and it also uses flagella to move around in the environment. Uh, so, uh, like uh, bacteria. Okay, so uh, we could observe like lot of points are like similar to bacteria. Then why you need a new classification? Okay, then came some new uh, facts. Okay, more facts. So archaea differ from bacteria in cell wall composition. Already we have uh, seen in the previous video that the cell wall is a unique feature of uh, bacteria. Okay, that is like prokaryotes. Uh, that too the cell wall is made up of peptidoglycan layer. Okay, but here in archaea, the cell wall composition was different. Okay, it was not like the same as of a bacteria. Okay, uh, also uh, uh, it also differed from both bacteria and eukaryotes in its membrane composition. Okay, so cell membrane composition. Okay, and especially on the rRNA type. Okay, ribosomes. Okay, the type of ribosomal RNA it had. Okay, so these three things. Okay, so cell wall composition, membrane composition, and rRNA. Uh, differences. Okay, so these differences were substantial enough uh, to warrant that the bacteria archaea have a separate domain. Okay, because it has some similarity like this, it has some genetic similarity like uh, eukarya. Then we can't put it in any one of these. Okay, so we need a new domain. Okay, so that's how this archaea was given a new domain. Okay, and we got a third domain. Okay, so what is this archaea actually like? What are the organisms comes under archaea? Okay, so archaea are like extreme organisms. Okay, so uh, what is like extreme? Okay, so they live under some of the most extreme environmental conditions. Okay, for example, uh, if you go like to Antarctica, okay, in the Arctic ice, okay, so even in that area, few organisms live. Okay, or like in uh, acidic springs. Okay, usually we know all the organisms needs uh, more uh, towards like a neutral pH. Okay, but uh, in acidic spring, okay. Uh, or if you go for a hydrothermal vents, okay, or you can go for a uh, near volcanic areas, okay, where the hot springs are there, okay. So in these kind of areas, it's very uh, hard for any organism to survive, okay. But still, the scientists found there are few organisms still living in these kind of areas, okay. So we commonly give a name called as extremophiles, okay. So extremophiles is the name usually we call it, okay, because they live in some extreme uh, conditions. Okay, so all these extreme organisms were put together in this group, archaea, which had this uh, characteristics differed from bacteria as well as eukarya. Okay, so the examples of this uh, archaea are given here. Okay, so these are some organisms. Okay, so uh, names of the organism which comes under archaea.